Can you hear me? <laughs> Great. So, let's go to this last session of the Angry Race Conference. I heard you guys have said us today, and that's very nice. So, you're probably awake for five more minutes, I guess. All right, I'll try to wake you up. So, um, if you've got any questions, meanwhile, just raise your hand or put down some of if I can. Um, my name is Chris Dory. I think we're 
Maybe some wax on, wax off.
I got to thank you for hearing those who were saying. As I was saying, observable is very important in our day. This is one thing that we have to decide that we can have a lot of time. This is the one we're going to operate on. So, with observable, there are quite a few trade managers. So, a great operator is the trade observer manually and what he provides is the behavior function. The behavior function is based on observer. This observer has the job of reporting when a value is hitting an issue. So if we look at this guy, we'll see here that every time we call observer next, we emit the value. And down there at the bottom, we have three that are described. So on the first call right here on the describe, this is the one that's going to respond. Every time we do next, it's the first one that's going to react and say, yep, I got the value. And of course, we got something that is error. So in this case, we have the observer and when we call error, we can hit the second call back here on the describe. And that's the means of a completion. The completion means that we don't have any more value in it. So when we come to this point, we're saying, okay, we are free to store, just like with a promise, we're only going to get one value and never again. So with a verbal thing, uh, it cannot kind of continue that we go free, we're actually putting a halt there. We're saying that like, no more value is ever going to enter the tree, we're done. And when that happens, the last call back of the describe is going to be hit. So this is a way for us to signal we're done. And um, we need to do any kind of, uh, you know, give back memory to do it. Okay, so here we have a case where we are actually allocating resources. When we allocate resources, we need to declare some kind of cleanup function. So as you can see here, we're doing the set interval. When we do the set interval, this thing is going to keep on ticking forever. Unless we have a way to say stop. So in this case, we need to find a function that takes the ID that we find from set interval, and we're able to clear the interval. In the uh, screen described here, we see that we actually care about the result of that. Because the result of calling the screen described is our description. So our description needs to be called at some point in time, and we need to call unsubscribe. All right. So when we call unsubscribe, this will actually call the first cleanup function that we define. So this is a thing that we need to bring in some of the cases, especially when we have manual break system. However, in most cases, this won't be the case to our JS, but there will be an operator that will break an observable for us, right? So if we use HTTP, there will already be an observable for us, there's no need to break it from scratch. But this concept is important to know about. So if you, for example, try to wrap an asymptom that then make it into an observable, you need to be aware of it. So when you take your next knowledge step and try to learn more about our experience, this is a concept that we need to know. The knowledge here, this is knowledge about our experience, is of course understanding all the operators and how to use them. But a better way to really understand something be able to recreate it. Right? So how many of you can actually create our say as a group? Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna take you through that side, or I'm gonna take you through that side. I'm gonna tell you how would I start out. So by, by just looking at the code, you can actually imagine what the underlying thing might be. Like. Let's try to build our own our say. Of course it's good for the public one, but the main reason we're doing over high, you know, something, right? So we're not going to give this guy an attack. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to build a great operator, trying to build a subscribe, and we're trying to build an unsubscribe. And a few more slides down in the past, we tried to build our own filter operator, but that was something. So the main concept for now is great operator, and the unsubscribe, right? The first thing we do is we have a list of code. And you guys remember this. I did the observable great. So what's taking place here? What can we learn from this to actually build our own system? So when we do observable great, well, of course, we should have an observable class, right? especially if we create a contract. We need to define our own observable class. We need to 
define a trace method from that observable. And we need a way to capture this behavior function. So three things. Just by looking at the code, you can imagine a lot about the code, right? So starting off with the observable that the first thing we know is that a trace method can take function. It's pretty obvious when you look at the code, right? You put a lambda function. So we know that the great method takes the same function, and we know that we can resolve the calling trace with a new observable. So for that reason, we do up an observable here on line two, and we are passing the behavior function into that observable. Because we know this, the constructor therefore must have a behavior function as parent. And we just say that for later use. That's pretty simple, right? Pretty simple book. And if we have a look at the describe of the string, we see a lot of things about this already. The first thing we see that there is a data callback. There is a callback function when the data is being hit. So we have a clue. Based on that clue, we can define the circle and the subscribe method. So we know for sure that the subscribe method is going to take data function. That data function, we're going to hold off with that one for now, but we know for sure that when we call the data function, with the observer, we are fulfilling uh, the contract, right? So we have a behavior function that we have saved this before because it's happened to the constructor and the trace method. We use that behavior function and give it an observer. But to give us a way, we know that we have to find an observer back. We haven't even visited it as of the observer. So we need to do that next. So the observer is pretty simple. Actually. The observer needs to have a constructor that takes in the data function. We need to save it for later usage. And for the next method, in the next method, we actually need to use the data function when we say any value that we need to make, we need to tell the data function about. So our data function in the describe is able to say, yay, I got a value. Right? You with me? I know the We need to go back to our observable set, and in the subscribe method, we can now scan the observer and we can pass it the data function. This is not a lot of code, all right? So in our subscribe, we scan the observer, we pass the data function, we take the view behavior function with observer as parent. This is very few lines of code, and this is essentially reiterating the core of our share. And putting this to the test. We can see that our code works. Sure, I'm not going to use this code, showing it that it works, but this is all unique. What about that? Can you not take the code? And you have to wait it. Right now we feel like that, right? Standing on top of a of a load that's quite developed, so we think we're all that, but we haven't actually added that software. So there's actually nothing that your personal can do that works for wrapping itself and allowing itself. So we need to add the unsubscribe. As I was saying before, for us to add an unsubscribe in the first place, there needs to be a reason for it, right? So in this case, I am creating some kind of situation here where there is an unsubscribe that should happen. So I define a set interval like I did before. I define a cleanup function. You've seen that before. And of course, this means that the added two rows here will be right next. So suddenly, it's easier when we execute the behavior function. This one will actually give us the garbage that we find the map. So once we have that function, we can just expose it by returning an object with the unsubscribe equals our data function. And thereby, we're adding unsubscribe. So subscribe, unsubscribe, we're able to create a servable. We have the core of our JS and our very rest. Pretty cool, right? I don't know, you can never watch the slide in your own time because there's a lot of slides happening. But to use this uh, newly added functionality, we have called three months of drive and we see that our interval is really done. And we see that our entire core thing will work. We have a massive core. <coughs> And we can unsubscribe it. We can clean up the 
So, and there's a summary so far. So we know how to fit the server. We know how to fit on the server. We know how to answer the question. That's quite a lot in a few minutes. So what do we have to say? Saying wisdom is not the yes, so we're saying we're not very wise, but we are knowledgeable. We're saying uh, other people do the same. Then the other thought, a lot of other ones. They have a repo for them. So if you actually come this far and understand the base, start looking at their GitLab repo and the issues and start copying. Yes, I don't think there was another part of it. But it's a very good knowledge to have, but like behind it.
and so on. So we need to build it on steroids. And this is the steroids. So you can definitely have this and bring this to your project. But this one does here that it's just exactly like the other one, but it's just a bit more. Have you guys heard of the assume method for geometry? Okay. So the scan method is you know pretty much the new so what this one will do is that it will, without creating a variable that has, you know, a number of times that I tried, it will take it internally. So it's a new functional paradigm, right? Don't create variables when you don't need them. So this kind of one, you can increment the number of times you tried, and here we have a conditional that says, if we try it three times, then we're giving up. And when we say we're giving up, we do withdraw it. And they say, oh, wait, we I don't trust you. So this can operator has a patient type that can kind of break it. But one thing that's very important to remember is that before you attempt it, you should actually look at what kind of errors you have. Because some errors are not worth the price. It's a vacuum that's 500, the likelihood that that's not just magnification is down zero, right? Or it's another type of each tricky error. So before you venture down this path, make sure it's an error that can't be copied from. So we should have some additional that checks for the error code. So that's what we want to miss. But otherwise, it's kind of good. And of course, as I was saying, if you do the throw in here after a number of failed attempts, we will end up with an error. And in the error callback here, we can just say we're going to respond with our local storage, right? Are any of you guys trying to use this kind of package? Ah, uh, Mona. So, from the search that we have been coding all along, what is it? What's the difference between a service and a Well, and we suppose it's servable to have many subscribers, right? It might not only be one component. It might be multiple components that want to compute the same data. And we don't want unnecessary people. We don't want unnecessary runs of So for that reason, we have our little service here, and we have the text data that we're able to post in a different practice. So what we can do here is, this is really a uh, version of the sensitivity of the and we can take the components and those are still the free to deal with the rest. So this is the simplest thing that might possibly work, and this might actually be all that's needed. Uh, so in this case, we have an array of services in the component that was called and we call service dot even. So in this case, we don't even need an array type, it will work the purpose of the property. And this one will just, you know, form and look. Not really interesting yet, but that was done. But the important point I'm trying to make here is that these detections uh, in Angular would actually work for this aspect. So don't overcomplicate search metrics. That basic method I'm trying to give you guys. Because it's very easy to say, I know a bunch of RSA's concepts. I'm going to use them all, but you end up with all that horrible mistake. So try to be very defensive when you use RSA. But trust in Angular's own changes. Okay, so what did we learn on this? We should handle offline. We should handle safety connections. I can't guarantee that everyone's going to go that. We uh, learn how to build a good service. But there's more to it. HTTP than just a small question, right? There are web services, there are full detailed connections. And how do we do this? Like, take this service, we can. We have Firebase, we have some IO, we should provide this. Uh, we are calling a lot of different animals. And this actually affects how we write our search. But I dare say that it doesn't affect that much in our search. When we add soft IO, the thing we need to do is to make sure that we navigate the process by calling IO with a certain URL, and we have a local duplex connection on the run, right? So this guy can actually push data for us. Alright? So when we push the data, we're able to listen to that event, like the task event that we defined on the server. We just can put an event, then we get this event task, we say, thank you for these tasks, I will add them to my list and push them out to the user. Right? The data this can not only come from your endpoint, it might actually come from a good connection. As you can see here, there's not a lot of code that we can take. 
But there is an attack. I mean, this is good in most. But what happens if we want to act What if we want to react to when something like that happens? So when this something like that happens, you might actually want to say that your friend here is supposed to be moving it. And I want to show something like that. I'm kind of post or something in the UI. Things have actually changed. I want to know about In this case, it's not good enough to do it this way. There are two different approaches that we can take here. It's using a shared replay and we're using a behavior public. So these guys here are more the, the candidates that will handle this problem. So this is a one of the three cases in a topic might be need. I'll say might because you can actually solve the results from this or the other. But it's a way to go. So adding a behavior topic means that uh, we have this little guy here. Uh, so in the end store, we see that we have a kernel store and the kernel store is a behavior topic. So this is instead of using tax to rate, all right? So we change our task to rate to something more reasonable, right? Change it into the subject. You guys know what the subject is. Okay. okay. So the subject is like a double name. But in the verbal, you cannot verbal have called it historical. The subject also acts like a verbal, which means you can call it a full name. It's a dual nature, all right? But the behavior subject is a dual nature, plus it has some initial behavior that you can take advantage of. So the behavior subject has the ability to do initial that. So in this case, I've instantiated this with an empty ring up here to do this very top of code, which means that even though the HTTP might take four seconds to solve the data from the endpoint, you can say something to the user that you can complete. So by giving the constructor here some default value, this is what you get. It also has the ability to actually remember the basic data of the thing, which is very powerful to do whatever component. So in this case, we have a two operator to do the inside the text. So the two operators are a store next to the data and then the you know, the one one the data that is made from So we initialize it. Oh, this is a very important point. We need to do the sense of the code. We don't want to tell the entire plan that we just behave about it because it has the ability to charge itself. Something else, but it also has to get into the push data. Most likely, outside of this class, we want to act as a verbal, which means we are actually going to convert the internal verbal to the outside model. So we call our subject an app of verbal, which will actually act as a defensive mechanism and make it into a verbal. Defensive code. And when we build our service like this, uh, we are including our service, and we can see that by actually this uh, service from sort of size, we're actually told when an update happens. And when an update happens, we're able to show the event. Is that what we want in the first place? But in all other cases, when you don't care about you know seeing the result straight away, you just want to show the next you don't care of knowing exactly when it happens, then you don't need to do all the okay. So this is only for the cases where you care about when the thing happens and it's important for us to say that too. So most of the time, we don't do this up. There are a lot of fun concepts in our experience. It's very difficult to go on board in the next 30 seconds. So, one thing I tried to convey before that was that promises were not enough to be in the advanced process. All right? They were not enough because you might have callbacks, you might have glitches, you might have uh, keystrokes, and so on. All of those are the so these async concepts can actually be remade in the purple, which means that everyone can play nice with our async concepts, right? So how would it actually just be in place? I've hinted at before. I've hinted at like the up the kernel of the AGAC, and this is probably like you know, So I'm going to start off with a naive approach, and I'm going to go into a little better approach with it. And lastly, I'm going to show you exactly what this will look like in Angular. Are you going to like 50 minutes later? The very last thing. Right? All right. You can be awake then. So, the first naive approach, this guy, uh, the first thing we do is to grab hold of an element. We assume there's an element in our bar class that's called text. We say thank you for that element. And we use an operator called stop event where we decide the element and the last event. All right. So, now 
now we have to scream with you. But we didn't ask for that. We will actually allow us to fit into that and they will not be a public company. After that, we do a filter, and the filter says we only care about anything we value unless we care about anything we care about. So, this is a particular scenario for calling that we most likely don't want, you know, a run to the server and a run to the police. And as you can see here, we do this. I have made it. Symbols that show the principles, but in the side of the group, and we bother to do like media all the time. Thank you for all the input and data inside of the input box. I'll take those to the endpoint, do a query, and get the data back. This is exactly what the observable inside of the group has to do. So here you see they are intermittent, intermittent concepts. They're taking events. It could be multiple, right? But in this case, it's here. So we are making different. Type of a thing, and it's not something that's probably going to happen. You can only like, you know, normal type. So, a better approach to this is, of course, not to the center of the but the design. So, what does the design do? Anyone know? Yeah? Okay. So, this one weighs 100 cubes, so it's tight. So, by thinking about 500 milliseconds, you're essentially saying, I'm going to wait for the users to not do anything because this is happening. So once they stop typing and do this to the keyboard, this is when I want to make the request. So by calling the box 500 milliseconds, we need to have a more natural approach to our work. This is way better than the system, by the way, so that's why I'm making a better approach. But okay, so at this point, you're thinking, yeah, it looks like magic. You need to die and get the new by Donald. No one can do one thing. So I can call the page and see what's going on. <laughs> so the angular approach is the part of the first. The angular approach is to get an HTTP client, and inside of there we just need some kind of search uh, that does that HTTP get. It does a query based on our input set. So this one looks very different. The hard part, or the more verbose part, has to be So if we look at the top part, we can see that in our markup, are going to be more input, and we are also interested in listening to the input when that changes. So, this is more of a reaction port, and it's going to start with the reaction port. So, with the reaction port, we have a value system. We can listen to the data. But the main point is that we need to listen to the value changes, and we want to do a bounce time. It's actually like we did before. Right. There is bounce, rate of music, stop typing, and we don't want to start on the same thing twice because that's one of the things we really know about. Right. We have a user typing something and we do a wrong thing the first time. But the second time, we don't want to be a problem. So we are essentially saying, do what is happening on the phone. This is what the beginning And of course, at the end of this, there is a switch map which calls our service, which calls the endpoint and actually do the look at in the data. Right. So we just moved our vanilla RSA code into the service and then we injected that service into a program and we have a fully working in action. And that you can use it. In summary, it's actually in In summary, we understand how to build our RSA. That's something you could say before you actually do it. In my slide, and then we did try and a lot of talking to you and understand that we know how to build our shit. And uh, we have to walk to get this slide and the old What else? Our has done a lot of heavy lifting for us because we have the operators that help us, and we also have operators for advanced data analysis. You saw the required number, right? Takes a number of times to go a progressive delay or so on. And some contracts in our case should be like five to be like up to this. There's some that we can take for. And we can use rich competition. We can intermix all these nine of the companies in one. And this is really the powerful thing about our search or our day of either. And here's my little book, you can find it under Andrew Isles of the book. I'm always looking for people who can help me update it and follow it down the street. So hopefully we will get to some nice points so we will help you in the project because this is about the meaning of that next generation.